What's up everybody, hello and welcome back. I've thought about this video for a long time and the most recent Fafcast I did where the Horde just lab spammed his way to victory kind of reinvigorated my mind here and I figured this would be a good time to actually make the video. And I'll be honest, I'm super confused right now. A lot of the times whenever I make these videos, I have a preconceived notion on what's going to happen. And then my research either confirms or denies that. Normally it confirms it, um, where I have an idea of how things are going to go and a point that I'm trying to make. And then usually my research substantiates that and I can put it into a video for all of y'all. But this uh, one has been the Supreme Commander science equivalent of a WWE chair shot. And I'm literally left reeling here on what I've found and I'm very confused by the data because by and large, the data that I'm calculating does not support my findings in the game. So if you're excited like I am, consider dropping a like and a subscribe and let's get into it. First off, let's start with my initial ideas. Going into this, I was almost 100% positive that units got less efficient per mass invested as you go up the tier list. So. Tier 2 is less efficient than Tier 1, Tier 3 less efficient than Tier 2, etc. And we can see this in pretty extreme examples with Strikers versus a Galactic Colossus or with Labs versus a Monkey Lord. Now you see me microing the units because the engine actually doesn't support a mass attack for 500 units on a single unit, so I had to subdivide them into groups to get them to move or attack. And I use strikers against the GC because if you've ever tried to spawn 1000 labs and control them in a game, the engine just cannot handle it. And I don't have a slouch of a system. I have a i7 10700K clocked to five gigahertz all core and it still chugs and errors with many of the units all taking the same attack command. So getting all of these units, even with the strikers versus the GCs and the labs versus the monkey, to actually attack uh, the opposing unit was, was really, really difficult. And the data supports uh, that it should be maintained as you go lower through the stack. As you guys see in the footage, labs are able to take out a Monkey Lord and the Strikers are able to take out the Galactic Colossus. And the data that I have calculated supports that throughout the stack, not just Tech 1 versus Experimentals, but Tech 1 versus Tech 2, Tech 2 versus th Tech 3, Tech 3 versus Experimentals, etc. Um, and I never expected, I, I was expecting to make a case for why you should ever upgrade to tech three based on the data that I'm looking at and that you should stay at tech two and spam units because I personally have had a lot of success with rolling, uh, with Cybran tech two and doing pretty well, putting pressure on my opponent, but let's go ahead and get into the data and why I'm kind of confused. So I put my spreadsheet on the screen here. And I'll switch back and forth between it and uh, the footage that is appropriate, highlighting some of the data, but the meat is in the columns on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, essentially, whenever you're looking at the mass, uh, mass DPS and mass health calculations and mass range calculations, those are also, um, uh, those are also applicable in some form or fashion. The higher equals the better, if you were curious. And essentially what I've done is put health and DPS and range over mass invested. Now there shouldn't be a, a new ratio for a lot of you that are longtime viewers, but essentially these are metrics for how many of X you get per mass invested. So for example, damage per second on the striker is 24 and the mass cost is 56. This means we get roughly 0.4 damage per second per mass invested. And at least for DPS, this does support my initial conclusion that the higher you go through the tier list, the less efficient you are with mass. And the value comes from condensed damage per second and the ability for that damage per second to stay alive for longer because of the higher amount of health that the higher tier units have. So for example, if you mass equate five pillars with 19 strikers, you end up with a damage per second that massively favors the strikers, but that damage per second is able to get whittled down one unit at a time instead of being condensed into one unit that has 
a higher health value, which is what I found. And I was thinking that the higher damage per second of tech one would overwhelm the higher health value of the higher tier units. But this is where everything kind of gets turned upside down with what my preconceived notions were. So as you all saw, this is true for tech one versus experimentals. Strikers are able to take out the GC with over hundred to spare. Mech Marines are able to take out a Monkey Lord with a similar buffer. And this all even with the units being semi unresponsive because of how many of them I'm trying to order around. Um, and like I said, if you all are excited for fixes to this problem, take a look at Beyond All Reason or Sanctuary, both of which are projects that I've been involved with and are very promising and will make large scale, I think, orders like this where you want 600 units to attack one unit a little bit more feasible. Um, I've just seen them, uh, both of these projects are able to utilize more resources in a system and Forge Alliance Forever. The underlying game engine is just a little bit outdated and as much as we throw modern hardware at it to fix the problem, ultimately there are some problems in the engine that we're just never gonna be able to fix. But here's where things get weird. For my test on Tech 1 versus Tech 2, there was absolutely no contest. Tech 2 main battle units absolutely decimated the Tech 1 units, even with their advantage in efficiency. And it was almost the same for Tech 2 versus Tech 3. Percivals were kind of the one exception, and they performed about as I would expect Percivals to perform, where they massively overkilled um, with each of their shots. And this comes down to their slower fire rate, like Titans are, are kind of the de facto uh, Tech 3 unit versus if you're versing a lower Tech a lower tech faction, but in order to keep things as uniform as possible, I dropped Percival's in here. Breaks and Harbs were able to knock down all of the opponents, even with the advantage. And this goes down to the fact that they have a higher fire rate, longer range, etc. Which leads me to my conclusion. I was prepared to tell y'all that upgrading to a higher tech level would come with some trade-offs. I was also prepared to tell y'all that uh, staying at tech one and spamming harder for longer would be a viable strategy. And I've seen this tactic in a couple of casts, um, specifically Gaia, uh, specifically a couple of Guile casts, and I think Willow had one. Uh, they don't, the exact cast don't come to mind, so I'm not gonna be able to link them down in the description below, but I have seen this before. And if y'all are longtime watchers of my channel, Willow's channel, Guile's channel, Derp's channel, any of the amazing casters, that we have in the FAF community, um, you will have no doubt seen a particular scenario where Tech One land, a player will stay at Tech One land, spam, and will end up winning the game. But I think that these tests have proven my initial conclusions incorrect. Uh, I think that what these tests have shown is that you should only stay at your current tech level until you can afford the next one. There isn't a huge amount of value in staying at one tech level to outspam your opponent at that one tech level. So for instance, my normal strategy, staying at tech two Cybran in order to spam rhinos, hoplites, and deceivers while my opponent might be on Titans is not going to be viable. Have there been games where this has worked out for me by some fluke accident? Yes, but does this mean that this is a good strategy? No, it is not. And this video goes against a lot of what I do as a player. I like to spam T1, then transition to T2, spam heavy T2, and then rush experimentals. I don't normally uh, hang out at T3 phase. It's only been very recently, over the last like month or so, that me as a player, I have hung out at a T3 phase, spammed some bricks, and then transitioned to experimentals. Usually I almost entirely skip T3 main battle units and go to experimentals. Uh, but I think that this video shows that my particular play style is not the most efficient way to play the game. And as for the experimental anomalies that we saw, I think this does highlight that a certain that there is a certain manufacturing point that is incredibly unrealistic. The advantages that Tech One has in efficiency are offset by the amount of units you'll actually need to produce to get there. So for example, if you went heavy T1 and you have eight T1 factories in a custom game, let's call it a 5v5, those are pretty standard. You have eight T1 factories, it's a 5v5 on a 10 by 10 map. It'll take you a little less than seven minutes to create the number of labs you'd need in order to take on a monkey lord like we saw earlier. Now, let's say you just incredibly, you were just like, fuck everything, I'm not going to even make tech two. 
I am all in on Tech One, increasing your production to 15 to 20 T1 land factories like we saw in the cast earlier with the Horde. It'll take about three minutes to produce the number of labs needed and that assumes that you have uh, enough mass. But that's ultimately where the, the question comes in, right? Is you have to have enough mass. You have to have enough mass to create this number of labs. Going for T1 doesn't change the amount of mass that you actually have to invest. It only changes what the mass is going into. And ultimately, it is, in my opinion, better to have that amount of mass into a condensed single unit that isn't going to be withered down by a T2 point defense or things like that, and is able to push into an enemy base with a little bit of support. But that all being said, there are probably some errors in my calculations and in my conclusions. So I'm looking forward to reading what you all have to say in the comments below. As always, in every science video, I do my best to prepare, but there are always things that you all uh, are able to bring to my attention that um, are I just didn't really think of or our angles that I didn't really think of, which is what's awesome about this being like such an amazing community where there's a lot of very smart people in this. And I am by far one of the dumbest people in this community. And that's what I love uh, about seeing y'all in the comments below discussing these various things. And I'm hoping that these videos just kind of jog some conversation. So with that being said, let me know what y'all think about my conclusions down in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe uh, to the channel. There's a lot of science videos like this one on the channel, and I do work very hard on these. These uh, these science videos take probably seven or eight hours worth of total work after I edit, write the script, record the footage, and finally export, create the thumbnail, upload it, edit the title, etc. There's a lot of work that goes into these science videos, so I would really appreciate it if you all would uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, help recommend it to other people that are playing Forge Alliance forever that might benefit. But that being said, I'll stop shilling for my own channel and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.